What's going on, Reject Nation? Greg Alba here. And John Humphrey here. Wearing Jeff Bearskin's Peterson shirt that he, uh, you know, got from Patreon. Uh, we got to mail it out to him, but I thought I'd wear it in first, sweat in it a tad bit yeah. before sending it out. Queens of the Stone Age shirt, new album out today. Go buy <laughs> Villains, it's great. We're going to check out from uh, Screen Rant, an awesome uh, YouTube channel and a great website. You know, there's a girl on Screen Rant named Casey Spiever, Spiver? Okay. I've seen her okay. video so many times and I keep forgetting how to say her last name. I'd like her to come on the channel. I met her at El Tejano. Anyway, Get ten, over here. Ten actors who are forced to replace other popular actors. I was almost forced to replace Eddie Redmayne in Jupiter Ascending. <laughs> it's crazy. It isn't always easy getting a movie or television show completed, especially if an actor needs to be replaced. This could be due to scheduling. Oh, that was Zac Efron. <laughs> <laughs> the actors may not fit what the director had in mind in the end. All of these factors can hold up production time or be frustrating. However, the outcomes can be advantageous and give the film something it was lacking. Here's a list we've compiled. Don't what, forget to I wonder who we're not going to know below. about. Have yeah. you joined their notification squad? If not, be oh, sure these to stories do so get to see great videos. Can you guess which movie these emojis are referencing? Make it through the end of the video to find out. They can't start none of this thing without me. Pelham 1, 2, 3. Daphne Reed, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. If I remember you that. Watched the Fresh Prince of Bel Air mom changed. Entirety, then you would have noticed that Aunt Viv suddenly looked like a different person. She's very outspoken about it. Well, really? it definitely was a different person as she was replaced. Daphne Reed replaced the original Vivian Banks, played by Janet Hubert, starting the third season of the show. Dang. Since social media wasn't flourishing at the time, no one really knew the reason behind the change in actors. Back then, Janet's absence and replacement seemed to be due to creative differences. As it turns out, it was far more complicated than that. Oh, Even yeah. Though Hubert may have been funny and a good actress, she did not get along very well with others yeah. on set. Aww. Apparently went a little nuts. It is said that she wanted the show to revolve around her. She was not keen on the then 20-year-old Will Smith coming in. I'm the, the Fresh himself. Prince. <laughs> in the industry close to a decade, after all. She was making close to a quarter of a million dollars at the time, and then all of a sudden, nothing. Sometimes, Aww. it's a little hard to take the back seat when someone up and coming comes in and steals the spotlight. Mark Ruffalo, The Incredible Hulk. What? what? Think of Mark Ruffalo. Well, he was an Indian crap. Since he's taken over the role in the Avengers franchise. If you remember, though, Edward Norton had the privilege of playing the Hulk as well, but things didn't work out in the long run. No one knows for sure why Norton doesn't play the Hulk anymore, but there may be some uh, reasons behind it. Norton was promised a lot of creative control when he took on the role. Part of that control was him completely rewriting the script. The heads yeah. of the studio apparently didn't like his darker story and decided to work with Zach Penn's original script. The media caught wind of this, and it was turned into a much bigger deal than it needed to be. It created even more of a rift between Norman oh, and yeah. Marvel, and both parties agreed oh, that yeah. the role of the Hulk was given to someone else. It was probably a blessing in disguise that Norton stepped down, because he was able to work on some great movies, such as Moonrise Kingdom, Birdman, and The Grand Budapest Hotel, all of which are very diverse and suited him very well. Absolutely. Yeah. Mark you replaced Ryan Gosling. Bones. Really? You know, Ryan Gosling wow. was supposed to star in Peter Jackson's 2009 gained too much weight for it. The rumors initially were that Ryan Gosling was too young for the role. Actually, it wasn't that at all. Gosling had put on 60 pounds for the part, and the producers Whoa. and directors were not too happy Aww, with chubby Gosling. change. He said he put on the weight because that's how he thought the character of Jack Salmon, who is a grieving father, should look. A 210-pound man with a gut who's most likely depressed. Jackson and Gosling did not see eye to eye on how the character should be played. Dang. This was due mostly to the fact that there was limited communication between the two in the pre-production process. Gosling dropped out only two days before production began. If wow! Remember, Mark Wahlberg eventually starred in the role. The movie was adapted hey. by a book of the same name written by Alice Sable, which was released in 2002. It was an instant bestseller and was popular with the teens and younger adults. Do you like Mark Wahlberg's performance in this movie, or would you rather have seen Gosling? I would have rather seen Gosling's. Chubby Gosling looks like Chubby John. A little bit. I look like Chubby Rogan. Catherine Heigl, mm -hmm. knocked up. She replaced someone? Seth Rogen and Anne Hathaway starring together. What? Whoa, I didn't uh, know that. Not at all. Anne Hathaway was originally supposed to play the role of Alison Scott. I did not know that. uptight, career-minded woman who ends up having a one-night stand and getting pregnant. Catherine Heigl was soon the new leading lady after Hathaway dropped out. Hathaway apparently was not too excited about the birth Hathaway would have been great. Movie, and that's the reason she dropped out. Having not experienced motherhood herself, she felt she was not right for the part. After the film was released, yeah. Heigl was upset. Imagination is not a thing, you know women as humorless and uptight while all the men are goofy and fun-loving. It's strange why she would wait until the end of filming to state her opinion on the role. However, we don't know exactly what was going on behind the scenes. Even though Heigl may have disapproved of the movie, she gained popularity and played the character very well. After her role in Knocked Up, Heigl went on to star in movies like 27 Dresses and The Ugly Truth. Two other romantic oh, comedies in oh. back-to-back -back years <laughs> and more popularity in Hollywood. 
Did Robert Downey Jr. replace? John Cheadle. Iron oh, Man. Oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. man has <laughs> raged for a little bit coming. in the Iron Man series when Lieutenant Colonel James Rhodey Rhodes was replaced. If you remember, Don Cheadle took over the role for Terrence Howard after the first movie. The movie blew up at the box office, making over $318 million in the U.S., and the studio decided to go a different direction with the character of Rhodey. Howard was supposedly offered only a small fraction of what he was supposed to make That's for Iron Man 2, and the studio said that the sequel yeah. was going to be a success with or without him. Then in comes Don Cheadle. Tony's best friend, liaison between Stark Industries and the military, and War Machine when he dons his own set of armor to help Iron Man out. I prefer Terry Tower. The on-screen chemistry between Cheadle and Robert Downey Jr. was a little different between him and Howard, but they still have similarities. The dialogue is still humorous, and the repartee between the two of them never gets old. Cheadle was allotted a lot of screen time in the sequel, and we were treated with great scenes between the two great actors. Do any of you miss the original Rhodes? I do. I do. Have you grown I prefer him. Don He's got a different vibe, role? that's all. Hey, I think you replaced DiCaprio. Yeah. This movie definitely requires an explanation as far as the casting is concerned. Believe it or not, Bale technically ended up replacing himself in the movie American Psycho. He played Patrick Bateman, a wealthy New York investment banking executive who hides his sadistic side from his friends. After Bale was originally cast, Leonardo DiCaprio was somehow hired at the 1998 Cannes Film Festival by Lionsgate executives. This was right after Titanic was popular and propelled DiCaprio to land more roles. Bale was surprised by the news, as was Mary Heron, the director. Heron refused to meet with DiCaprio, saying he wasn't right for the part and felt he was oh, too boyish. Oh, that would have been a good also, joker right there. Yeah, to yeah right. Wall Street guys. Leonardo's take on it is a little different. He had said he wasn't satisfied with the film's direction and had problems with the script and plot. Plus, he wanted to work on a different film, so he ended up abandoning American Psycho. It is kind of ironic that Mary Harris yeah. did not take yeah. the role of a tough Wall Street guy. He did pretty well playing one as Jordan Belfort in The Wolf of Wall Street. Maybe he just needed some time to grow out of his boyish phase. That's true. Yeah. I agree. Ooh, I think I know this one. Hugo Weaving, Hood V for Vendetta. I forget. Brandon remember, Gleason. remember, the 5th of November, the gunpowder treason and plot. If you've ever seen V for Vendetta, you remember this excerpt from the anarchist by the name of V. Most people know Hugo Weaving, who gained popularity by playing Agent Smith in the Matrix trilogy, was cast as V. He's also babe. You probably didn't know this, but James Purefoy was originally cast as the masked vigilante. Okay. You may have remembered Purefoy from A Knight's Tale, playing the role of Prince Colville, who saves Heath Ledger from being executed. Purefoy quit production about six weeks into the filming of V for Vendetta, stating he did not feel comfortable wearing the infamous mask for the entire movie. He was upset that no one would ever see his face, and it was a great challenge acting-wise. He was also concerned with how many takes <laughs> would need to take place whilst wearing the mask. As far as anyone's concerned, Weaving did not have any issues and was eventually cast in Purefoy's place. Even though Weaving's face was never shown, the iconic voice of his made up for it. It probably helped Dude. that the Wachowski brothers, who wrote and directed The Matrix, also wrote V for Vendetta. Yeah. They may have put in a good word for Hugo. He's got a good voice for him. What? The Hell Houseman, Game of Thrones. If you're a Game of Thrones fan, you most likely oh, yeah, 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 yeah. have Houseman playing the role of Dario Naharis. You know, the bodyguard, advisor, and part-time lover. We're going to find out why. The mother of dragons. The you may have forgotten all about long-haired Ed Screen, originally playing the role. He left after the very popular HBO show's third season to play in the transport. That's why he left? To yeah. do that? That's why he uh -huh. left the television series. Screen has said that the most important thing in his life is family. Game of Thrones may have been taking him away from them for too long. Or the possibility of making more money for starring in a major movie franchise was too intense for him. Whatever the case, Mikhail Hausman was thrust into the role and the show has gone on. He captured our attention with his bravery and smarts, as did Daenerys. I Houseman prefer the replacement. Houseman a lot of screen time, and it's added an extra him. dimension to the show. Along with a love interest side with Daenerys and screen time eye candy, Dario's dialogue and dedication to the Khaleesi make for good television. His screen time should increase even more as the show progresses. When's he coming back? Michael Bean, Aliens. James Cameron made it big when he released Aliens in 1986. It had a little different feel from the original, but still wowed audiences with its special effects and style. Everything didn't go completely right, though, as James Remark, who was initially going to play the role of Corporal Dwayne Hicks, left the project. I could see that. Yeah. resolve his creative differences with Cameron. The yeah. result of this brought could, in Michael Bean. I could see that. In the Terminator and The Abyss, which Cameron also directed. Cameron apparently liked working with the guy, and he helped get his name out there. He received a phone call on Friday after Remar left, asking if he could play the part, and then began shooting on Monday. He did a great job considering he was thrust into the role right away without the extra rehearsal period. He did not partake in the roundtable reading of the script or any army drills. Since they were playing soldiers on the screen, they usually take the actors out with a drill sergeant who puts them through the routine. Apparently Bean hated to do that, so he was happy to jump right in. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I'm having this conversation with my computer. You're not. You're having this conversation with me. Oh, Scarlett she, Johansson. yeah. 
Her, yeah, I heard about Spike this. Jones is her, starring Joaquin Phoenix, is sure to surprise audiences. It's a heartfelt story about a lonely, divorced greeting card writer named Theodore who ends up falling in love with an operating system. Theodore seems like a fairly normal guy who enjoys playing video games and occasionally hanging out with his friends when he isn't working. However, you know things start to change when he purchases Jones. the operating system. It's the first operating system that is artificially intelligent and is programmed to meet his every need. Queen Latifah. Their ad states, <laughs> it's not just an operating system, it's a consciousness. Samantha Morton was originally cast as the voice-only role. Huh. Of Samantha, she the operating like? system which Phoenix falls in love with. She completed all of the filming for the movie and then out of nowhere was recast with Scarlett Johansson. Wow. During post production, yeah. Spike Jones decided that Morton was not right for the role. And then in game wow. Johansson, technology seems to be advancing even more rapidly. And AI operating systems don't seem as far fetched as they may have in the past. How do you feel about having AI in our society? Other movies have touched on the subject in different ways, and her brings about the romantic side of it in an interesting it's way. Just the question what do you think of our list? Are for there any the others you video? can think of? <laughs> that they're asking the YouTube. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What do you think of AI? <laughs> oh, did you get it? I'm Hello for it. <laughs> Let him take over. Awesome Machines are smart. <laughs> Guys, subscribe to Screen Rant, man. They're Do great. It. They're a great channel. I love their website too. I just like to rant at screens. I already forgot the actresses' names, but the the Fresh Prince of Bel Air one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I watched all the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and as a kid, I didn't notice it. I didn't either. I mean, I watched it on TV in like scattered episodes, so like I yeah. didn't have a great grip on the entire ensemble. Yeah. So that yeah. one flew completely over my. No, head. but just recently, I think it was this year or last year, uh, the the original actress has been very vocal. It was around. Suicide Squad. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember this. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was trying to... Is there a Suicide Squad or a concussion? One of those two. Bad-mouthing Will Smith and talking shit on him and everything. And she, like, did it twice within, like, a couple-month period. I something. think this was concussion because this was when the whole, like, we're not gonna go to the Oscars thing happened. Ah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she stepped up and she was like, I played his mom on TV, all right? Yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna lay down the law for a sec. I don't know why she would think the show could possibly be centered around her. The show was written for Will Smith. <laughs> Called the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Yeah, we've talked plenty before about Mark Ruffalo and Edward Norton. Yeah, I found I think Mark Ruffalo is probably a better suited actor for that role specifically, yeah. especially because of his demeanor and he, you know, because Bruce Ban. I, I feel like he is such an. I, I, okay, here's how I put it. Edward Ed Norton is already kind of intense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's already kind of intense too. Whereas Mark Ruffalo is really like relax kind of dude so to have the comparison between hulk and bruce banner works better i think yeah well yeah and i feel like an ed norton hulk would hulk out a lot more often <laughs> yeah exactly because yeah. he's already just an intense dude i yeah. believe that the mark ruffalo i believe the whole like i don't i don't want to and try yeah. not to i'm kind of unassuming when i'm just bruce i am obsessed with ryan gosling i did see these photos before where ryan gosling put on more weight i didn't see all what was it, the lovely bones lovely Is that bones what I, I didn't see all the lovely bones I, I watched like a good chunk of it on television Vision, like the first 40 minutes or whatever. Mark Wahlberg can be pretty hit or miss for me. He can either be like exceptionally awesome or just, eh, all right. It's either the fighter or the happening. Right? <laughs> That's one of the two, Pick right? one. Wide-eyed, like 50s child or just great dramatic actor. And I honestly would have preferred his take on uh, the father character. It seems more like a character choice and, and, and Ryan Gosling gaining weight for a grieving father who probably drinks and is lazy. That made more sense to me than in shape Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> You know, this guy maintains his life, but, you know, one of the subplots... Oh, yeah, so thing help me get through this grieving process. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem like it's as much at the forefront of Mark Wahlberg's <laughs> life. I mean, I think they have really different acting styles, so oh, I think totally. Ryan Gosling would have brought a ton to that movie, but I don't oh, know. Yeah. I didn't know about Anne Hathaway being po uh, the first person chosen for Knocked Up. I did not either. <laughs> you know, Katherine Heigl, it's such a fascinating career she's had. I think she's amazing in Knocked Up, and then she, like, bagged on the film, and and then she has like this shit career now. I think Anne Hathaway would have killed it too. I think both of them are a great choice. And, but I also think Anne Hathaway would have killed it. Well, you know, and she made up for it with Love and Other Drugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like that was her kind of in that realm of movie. Yeah. That, like, romantic drama comedy thing. All right. <laughs> Terrence Howard, I've said it before, I do prefer him. Uh, there's just something about his chemistry that feels more natural for Robert Downey Jr. I feel like because Robert Downey Jr. was cast, and they were probably trying to find a specific actor that would be tailored for Robert Downey Jr. as well. Terrence Howard's known to be a little egocentric, and it kind of shows in almost all of his roles. 
roles. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I don't know, kind of having the two budding egos, but also loving trust. You know, it, yeah. Don Cheadle brings it just a very different dynamic. I feel like I like Don Cheadle's Rhodey because I like Don Cheadle and he's a good actor. And maybe it was just the first impression that Terrence Howard left on me. But there is something special about that dynamic that doesn't feel quite as natural to me moving forward. Yeah. I kind of agree with you. And I don't know if that character will ever feel 100% natural again. Because it's hard to recast somebody just right off the bat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Terrence Howard was a memorable part to me in yeah. Iron Man. <laughs> yeah. And I, I've, I've never found Don Cheadle to be memorable. You know? Yeah, it's yeah. like I've always liked him and I've never. I've never hated what he's done, and I've never sat there going, "Oh, I wish Terrence Howard was back." But those but movies can kind of lose Rhodey and yeah. not really. Change. Even Iron Man too, which had a lot of Rhodey. Well, yeah, it does, and that's some, some personal conflict for Tony. But you could recast a lot of those fights with just him and yeah, and then shave that <laughs> whole party scene out of the movie. American Psycho with DiCaprio being in it. I think DiCaprio and Christian Bale. There's a lot of differences, but there's also a lot of similarities in terms of commitment. Yeah, like they're, they're a emotional commitment and their intensity i'm throwing myself into this yeah and they have this certain intense energy i, I remember years ago i came up with a story idea <laughs> i think i told it to you where i'm like i think it'd be so cool to have dicaprio and christian bale star in this movie and i've always wanted to see these two actors come together in a film dicaprio doesn't change his voice and mannerisms as distinctly as bale can do that yeah but there is enough similarities between their intensity They'll both grow crazy ass beards. Yeah, <laughs> that is where the unite the unison yeah. comes. And and you know, hey man, one day Christopher Nolan's gonna put him and his co stars together. It's yeah. gonna happen. And after seeing the the career DiCaprio has developed, I could see him doing an American Psycho role now. Now, yeah, definitely yeah. not Titanic era Di DiCaprio, but, <laughs> but now DiCaprio, I could see that. Dario oh, yeah. Naharis. I remember watching Game of Thrones, wondering what happened to that actor, and then I think two episodes with oh, the replacement yeah. guy was like. I think that's the same character. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, my, my my only issue with that at the time was like, oh, you cast another guy with dark hair and a beard. Yeah. I recognize the other guy because of his long hair and square jaw. The other guy, though, the one in Transporter Refueled, I don't know much about his acting, to be honest. But I thought he was cast for his looks more in Game oh, yeah. of Thrones. Yeah, totally. And I feel this other guy has a much more intriguing demeanor and personality. While his looks look very similar to a lot of other people on Game of Thrones. I think his personality fits in better, and he's, I could see him being cast more for the performance than the looks. Yeah, totally, and I and I got that sense too. The guy who who originally played him is more pretty, and yeah. I kind of I think he smiled a lot more. That's oh, the thing yeah. is when they replaced him, I thought not only was the look different, but the character felt different, like mm -hmm. his choices, the mannerisms, and all that. So that's what threw me. The transporter, man. And and then Deadpool. I you know. cannot bow. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. He's uh, what's his name? He's the guy. Kilgrave. <laughs> Kilgrave. <laughs> James Remar being um, uh, Hicks in Aliens. I could definitely see that based on how that guy tends to. Seems perform. like a Remar. Yeah, it seems like a Remar type of character. What I found fascinating was how Michael Bean just transitioned to that role because he's like one of James Cameron's go-to guys. He might have worked with James Cameron as much as Arnold has worked with James Cameron. Oh, man. Because he's in The Abyss, okay. and Arnold has True Lies. Okay. But in the T2 Special Edition, Michael Bean's in that one, too. Oh! So, so I think they've both equally worked with Arnold. Bean is on the scene. Yeah. All right, yeah. <laughs> but hearing how, because um, he's so badass in that, and everyone is very military trained. And he's beloved. And he's beloved. He's, he's a beloved he's a memorable character. 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 He didn't do any military training, and he barely didn't want to. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was funny. I was not expecting He that. got away with that, and he's totally believable in the movie as Hicks. I think he's way more believable as Hicks than he is as uh, uh, Kyle, Kyle Reese. Reese. Yeah. <laughs> and the one with her, I forget the actress's name that was the original one. That makes me curious as to the filming process of it. When I watched the movie, I was wondering, like, was Scarlett Johansson on set? Was she actually interacting with Joaquin Phoenix off camera? Was she on the phone with him? What were they doing? I remember... Because it sounded like such a natural back and forth. <laughs> yeah, I remember hearing that, that at least the way they shot a lot of it was they had, like, a booth and they would talk. I guess it was the original actress would talk with him and they would have the scenes that way. I think. Don't quote me on that, but I believe that's what I read from Spike Jones. And then yeah, they just looped in Scarlet later. Interesting. I wonder how the original actress feels about this because like, I think Scarlett Johansson did a great job and I love that movie. If she was just not the right choice for the role, I get it, but you know, that yeah. still kind of sucks to be like, oh, this neat part. Yeah, not anymore. Well, guys, uh, thanks for watching the video today. Hope you enjoyed our commentary portion. And the reaction. If you like our reaction, hit the like hit button. Hit the like. If you don't like it, 
hit the like button. 100 million subscribers. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Subscribe to The Real Rejects. Click that notification bell. Dat John Humphrey on Twits and Instagram. And check out our Patreon. Become a Patronajet today. Yeah. Patronajet. That's it's, the word. It's, a, it's not a very good word. Exclusive but Exclusive stuff.